Ever wanted to lazy load Angular components, so not just routed Angular components, but Angular components in general? Then check out this video. All right, so in this video, I would like to show you how to use NGX lazy element, a library which I have developed to help you lazy load Angular components by the use of Angular elements. Now there are similar libraries which are out there which solve a similar problem, but not exactly the same. One of them is Hero Loader, which you can find on NPM. Then there's NGX loadable. And finally, there's lo lazy loading of Angular elements. Now this is when you compile Angular elements into different JavaScript bundles, deploy them on a CDN. Now this library here will help you load them in on the fly in your application. But let's get back to our library and let's set it up for our project. Now, as you can see, the first step will be to add Angular elements. Now, since this library is based on Angular elements, we definitely need to add that to our project. So I have already generated here an Angular project. So let's open it up and add here Angular elements to it. All right, as a next step, let's just start up our application and get it running. All right, so this is one of the latest Angular applications generated with the latest Angular CLI, already version nine. It is brand new app, so let's open up here the app component module. Let's remove here some of the things and keep it really, really simple. So this is a lazy components demo app. Now in order to be able to lazy load some of the components, let's first of all create some Angular modules. Now as you might know, Angular modules as of now are the minimal thing that can be lazy loaded. Like it's the atomic unit that we can lazy load over the wire. So let's generate some modules and we will again use the Angular CLI. Let's generate a module called people. And then let's also create a component inside that people module, which is called people list. All right, now in order to connect them here now in our path, we see basically that people folder, which has been created. Now, of course, in order to use that people list outside, we also need to add here the export. So with that, we should be fine. Now let's go over to the app module and we need to import a people module. So it's just normal Angular things which you have to do. And finally, let's also here use that app people list component which we just created. Now, of course, we need to restart here our compiler. And so now once the compiler is up and running, you can see here how the people list works, like the, the text gets printed out. Now, right now, this is everything loaded statically. So we have no lazy loading. If you refresh here, we see here the scripts, the main JS, which gets downloaded and the styles and so on. But what if you want to lazy load that people list module? Now, of course, one way of doing that would be to root, to load this as a route. So basically we configure the Angular router and we load in the people list lazily over the Angular router. We want to take a different approach. So we have here basically our a diff and a diff is hidden via an ng if. Let's call here an is visible. And in our component code, we just add here this is visible. False. Let's bump up the font a bit. And so we want to basically show here that people list here based on whether the part is visible or not. So if you move it inside here, of course, it is hidden. Now let's add here a button on top. Use the type button and toggle area. And so what we do here is we can say is visible equals not is visible. And so we have kind of a toggle button which will now show and hide us the area. All right, now what we want to do is whenever that th section here gets visible, we want to laser load that people list on the fly if it has not been loaded yet. And we can do that with my NGX lazy element library. So the next step here would be to install it. And so we can just take this and do yarn add. I'm using yarn, but you can use of course also npm install the library itself. All right, so the next step will be to go to the app module and configure our application for lazy loading those components. Now, if you go back to the documentation, let's go down here and configure here our lazy configuration. So let's just copy this over. I'm placing this on the top here. And so what I want to load is, I want to lazy load uh, my uh, 
people list component. Now, if you open the people list component, you can see here we have this selector and there's a template URL and kind of a couple of stuff. And so let's copy this over, add this here as a selector because I'm telling basically whenever the selector happens or is being seen on the page, lazy load this module. Now, of course, your hello world model is no more correct. So we need here to use the people module. And of course, also here we use the people module. And so now with that, we have basically set up here that configuration. Now, what I usually do in order to show that this is a dynamic element is to change the selector. I can arbitrarily do this. I'm using this here, using here a dynamic element. So this is my new dynamic element people list, which will go and load the people list component inside there. But right now we just connected here the module. We also need to somehow tell the lazy loading library afterwards which component should actually be lazy loaded because inside that people module, which gets then lazy loaded over the wire on the fly, there could be multiple components. Now, in order to know which component we want to lazy load, we can here use the configuration property. So we have here a custom elements component and this is the conventional property library searching basically. And here we tell it, it is the people list module, which we want, the people list component, sorry, which we want to lazy load. So with that, we have set up here the module. Let's go back to the app module here. Now, of course, that lazy config now needs to be used. And so we use here the Angex lazy element library to pass it in. So I'm going here, I'm copying this in. I, of course, have to import that from Yuri SDR, Angex lazy element. And so with that, the configuration is set up and wired into the library. Now, another thing I'm going to do here is to remove that people module here because we don't want to have any hardwire because otherwise the lazy loading would obviously not work. So we remove all connections here to that people module. And moreover, since we have changed the selector here, we're also going back to our app component HTML where we have used our people list module. And I'm just going to change this here to use the dynamic element. All right. Finally, a last piece that is missing is actually we need to trigger the laser loading itself. And the triggering of the laser loading can be done by using here the so-called NGX element directive. And so we can just place it on top of our component here. And with that, we are basically done. Now there's the last piece missing here because since we added here a custom tag, which is not actually a selector of an Angular component, the Angular compiler will comp plain basically because it doesn't know the tag. And so what we need to do is we need to go to the app module and we need to import here the custom element schema and we have then to add that in our ng module. So there's a schemas property where we can reference that. And with that, the compiler is fine and basically doesn't complain about selectors. He doesn't know. And this is especially needed if you are dealing with custom elements in general. All right, so with that, we have configured our lazy element. Let's start application. All right, so once it is started, let's refresh here. You can see here the scripts get downloaded again. Now let me clear here the scripts panel and let's now toggle it area. And so what you can see here now that the people list module has been split out to be a different JavaScript file, so a separate bundle that happened automatically by the Angular CLI. And when I clicked that toggle area, that ng-if was basically toggled and was made visible. And so here this element became visible, the ngx lazy element directive triggered, started to lazy load the coding module, which is this people module, which we see here in the network panel, and then instantiated basically that element here. Now, what is one of the main advantages of using this custom elements or angular elements approach? Now there are similar solutions already present as I mentioned initially. The, the main issue there is that you cannot use the actual component which you would like, but rather you have some like lazy component placeholder, which then takes the selector of the app people list, for instance, which you want to lazy load, because that component here is responsible for lazy loading the module. And by using that selector here, it basically triggers that lazy loading, instantiates that component and then places it inside that placeholder. Another advantage here, or disadvantage with those approaches is that it is hard to pass in custom input properties. For instance, if that app people list here has a property called people, which is the list of people it is going to display. Now this will be a very hard time to add this to a solution like this because the selector here might vary and might have different kind of input properties. 
In a solution with the custom elements, that just works out of the box because Angular has first class support for custom elements. And so therefore we can just use them as we use them normally in our components. So let's see how that would work. First of all, let's go to the people list and actually add such an input property. Let's call it people. And for now, let's say that's in any uh, array which gets passed in. Now we also want to render that, of course. So let's open here the according people list component HTML. Let's here create just a div, which repeats with an ng4. Let person of people, which get passed in, and I just person the name render it out here. All right. Let's go back now to our app component. First of all, let's go into the HTML part again. Now here we, we want to pass in that people property. And of course we have to define it here in our app component. So I'm going to define it here in the TypeScript code. And this will be just an array of name Yuri, name Thomas, whatever. I'm going to save this. So basically we defined here an array, which we then basically in the HTML part just use. And we use that input property on our app people list and we then pass it in. Let's see whether still laser loading works. I toggle this in and you can see the people list works and it's also basically displaying the people's name inside here. This binding not only works statically, it's also completely dynamic, just as you would normally expect from an Angular component. For instance, let's say I have here a button type button at person. All right, so let's jump back to the actual co code here in the TypeScript part. We use here at person, and let's say I do here this dot people dot push, and we add here a new person, Igor. Let's save this. Again, right now the list is not loaded. I toggle it, you can see it gets lazy loaded. I can even do add person and the person will be added just as you would normally expect. So if this looks interesting to you, definitely go over to GitHub on Yuri SDR and Jax Lazy Element. I just released version 1.0. So file bugs or issues or even submit pull requests if you have a cool idea on how to use that library. Also, if you want to connect with me, head over to Twitter on Yuri SDR. Follow me there, write me, my DMs are always open or head over to my website, yurisdr.com, where I'm also having a weekly newsletter where I'm basically pushing out either new articles on my blog or via that newsletter, which is more sharing ideas which are upcoming, like new blog posts, which I'm currently writing, or videos which are exclusively for members of my newsletter. No spam, just cool tech news.